Hello Cupcakes, it's Maive, welcome back to my channel. I got some Dasmart polymer clay a few days ago and got to play around with it a little bit. So in today's video I wanted to share with you what I thought of it. I got a pack of 12 blocks of polymer clay in pastel colours but they also come in another 3 palettes. I also got some tools, an acrylic rolling pin with rubber guides and an extruder. However today I'll be trying out the clay and rolling pin because those are the ones I was more curious about. The clay comes in blocks of 28.5 grams each and like with all polymer clays they recommend baking it at no more than 130 degrees celsius for no more than 30 minutes. The packaging was really easy to open, you can lift the flap and easily separate the sheets and I was very happy to see the recyclable symbol on the back which I always look for when browsing for new products, not just craft products but everything I use in my daily life. Straight out of the packet the clays feel firm but as soon as I start kneading it and putting it through the pasta machine it feels a lot softer and a little sticky. For you to have something to compare it to I would say that it's soft like Fimo Soft and their consistency feels a little bit like a mix of Sculpey Ultra Light and Fimo Soft or maybe Sculpey Souffle, it's hard to describe. It makes me think of fondant or gum paste which is the same thing I thought of Sculpey Ultra Light and Souffle when I first used them so I thought it would be ideal for making fondant and frosting but I'll be trying that later on. Something I like to do when trying a new brand of clay is making a simple cane. Today I'll be making what I call a roly-poly cane. That's not the real name, that's just what I called it from habit until it stuck and then I forgot the real name, so yeah. <laughs> I'll be using the cane to make or remake a simple tortoise based on some I made a few years ago and here's the picture. So I cut two equal rectangles in different colours and cut one end at an angle so that it's easier to fold over itself. When it's small enough for what you need, cut some slices. Being soft clay and warm from handling it, the top layer of pink smudged a little bit into the green when I cut it so I'll let it rest and cool down while I work on the other parts of the tortoise. Don't throw any of the scraps away, mix them together and put them to one side. The legs are very simple to make, I started from balls of clay that I shaped into teardrops and pushed them together. Now you want to take another two rectangles of clay, stack them together and cut lots of strips trying to make sure that the same thickness. Then you want to take the strips and place one next to each other making sure you're alternating the colours. Now I'm going to try the rolling pin using the guides. I have to say that is a brilliant idea. When you feel like you're not touching the clay anymore just remove the big rings and move on to the thinner one and so on. Now remove the excess clay and cut more strips of the same thickness. Take the scrap clay we left to one side and measure it against your tortoise legs. Now that the roly poly cane had some time to rest, we can slice it and just as predicted, no smudges anywhere. Cut a slice and turn the cane so as to keep the roundness and so on and so on and so on. Now use the slices to cover the ball of scrap clay until there are no gaps left. The last one is sometimes a tricky one but don't panic because you can use that for the bottom of the tortoise shell. If you don't want any of the scrap clay to show you can use the same colour you used for the outside of the cane, in my case it would be the pink. Once you have all the slices on the bowl, use your fingers to press them in place and secure them. Don't be tempted to roll it straight away because the slices may not be all the same thickness and you may overlap some of them. So press them first so that they're all the same thickness and then gently start rolling the clay back into a bowl. Keep checking the bowl to make sure there are no smudges or weird things going on and only then start speeding up a little. You can stop whenever you want, the shell doesn't need to be completely smooth, you can leave a small gap in between the slices if you want, whether you're making the tortoise or beads, it's completely up to you. When your bowl is ready, flatten it slightly and wrap the bottom edge with one of the strips we made before. Then place the shell on the legs 
and you can either press a little more on the legs or cut the top of the legs flat. To make a simple head I rolled out a teardrop and used a needle tool to make the eyes, nose and mouth. Because the clay is soft, I wouldn't personally use it to sculpt with, just like I wouldn't use Fimo Soft or Sculpey 3 either. So I made another simple shape, just a very simple flower, uh, so that it was sort of flat and thin in areas and I could test to see how strong it was after baking. Like I said at the start of the video, the clay made me think of fondant and frosting. Being soft clay, it was of course really easy to mix and the consistency is just like frosting. I also tried using it like fondant and I loved the result. I would definitely use it for my miniature cakes as it does look like fondant before and after baking. Overall, I really liked this clay. I liked that the colours didn't darken or change in any way while baking. It was surprisingly strong once baked, even the flour felt really strong, even though it wasn't thick. Maybe it's a little sticky to the touch, but since I would not use it to sculpt complex structures, it's fine to sculpt simple shapes, moderate caning and to make frosting for miniature cakes. I really hope this video was helpful and if you've tried this clay before, do let me know your impressions in the comments below. Thank you all ever so much for watching and I'll catch you all in my next video. Bye, ciao ciao!